Hi, my name's Ron Hauptman, and I have the coolest job ever. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this is and why I have the coolest job ever. Um, so I was talking to one of my colleagues, and she is an assistive technology consultant for the same organization I work for, the Kent Intermediate School District in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And she was describing um, a problem that she was trying to solve for a student. It's a high school student in a photography class, and he uses a camera to obviously participate in a class but he was having a problem um, because of physical limitations getting to the shutter release and on most digital cameras as we know you have to push the shutter release down a little bit first to focus and then all the way down fully down to actually take the picture um, because of where the camera is mounted on his wheelchair on a tripod out in front of his face just a little bit he can't reach it with his arms um, because of the limitations that he has so um, knowing what I know about electronics and I'm just as a background I'm kind of an electronic nerd ham radio operator guy you get the point um, and I said you know there's got to be a way to do this so I did find out he had a Canon camera and in the back of my mind I said you know I remember this from a website one time that there was a way to modify Canon cameras to be able to do remote shutter release through the USB port so the website that I recalled was a site called CHDK. So if you just Google CHDK, you'll find it. And it's for Canon cameras, and you can upload different firmware into the camera. And what you really need for this is the camera, and it has to be compatible with the firmware that folks have written to uh, put into this into the camera. And then you need to build something. So here's the thing I built as a remote shutter release, and it's actually really simple. It's four parts. So part number one. This is a USB female connector and I had this laying around in my basement. This used to be a uh, USB male to USB female extension cord. It was about three foot and I lopped it off. You need a single pole single throw switch just like this one. You need a battery holder and this one is a three volt lithium ion battery. It's a CR2032 and this little holder for it by the way is um, this came off an old motherboard and you just wire it appropriately inside using your highly awesome soldering skills. And I, I still need to, I'm going to probably put some hot glue in here to kind of do some more strain relief instead of tying a knot in the cord. I, it works, but it's not going to last forever. And the last thing is you need some kind of container. So this container, by the way, people, <laughs> and boys and girls, I mean, this is an old film strip container, and I have no idea where I got this. I just have to tell you, you know, most nerds like me, um, we collect things in our basements, and we don't get rid of them because we always have in the back of our mind, hey, I might use that someday. And if you don't know what a film strip is, um, it's a 35 millimeter film that runs really slowly, and you need somebody to help you. <laughs> and, oh, it needs a record player too. If you remember those, are these vinyl things you put on this flat platform, and it uses a needle and and every time there's a beep after the person talking you have to switch anyway so so here's this thing that I built the way it works is actually pretty cool so this when you push the switch it automatically makes the circuit inside here and then it runs the voltage from the battery down your USB cable that probably came with your camera to a USB mini connector and that USB mini connector then plugs right into the camera, just like that. And then this is where the preparation comes with the firmware. Is with the firmware, you'll see this thing load in just a second. That that firmware called CHDK, and this doesn't actually have to be put directly on the camera. You can upload it um, right to the SD card inside of this thing, and that SD card um, inside of this will every time if you set this up right will boot the camera into this new mode and it gives you a bunch of new tools I'm not going to go into all those you can read it at the um, website from CHDK um, so once that's uploaded in and starting you can go into this new menu here and this menu will give you a thing here that says remote parameters so this is a little bit different if you're familiar with Canon cameras it's a little bit different of a menu system and then I just turn on enable remote right there and now that will allow me to control the camera by using the remote control and this little switch now 
will, when you push the little button, it'll take cam or take pictures on the camera. Just by first pushing it down once, it'll put into automatic focus and pushing it down again, it'll take the picture. Now, this is really slick. Now, just think about this. Now, this camera can be sitting wherever, and the distance limitation is only, you know, as long as your little cable is. So the student can now have this sitting on his wheelchair or near his joystick controller for the power chair. And all he needs to do is push it down once to do the focus and then push it all the way down to take the picture. So he's fully able to participate with the rest of the class. And I thought this was probably one of the easiest, simplest ways um, to actually accomplish this without spending, I mean, any money. Basically, this is for me, this is parts that are free in my basement. Um, the thing is with you know the jobs that we have as educators and myself as an educator and education technologist is that I'm always looking for solutions to problems to help kids learn and this very simple little thing is really probably going to help him quite a bit not just now in his class but beyond that too because now he sees a few things the possibilities that exist and that he knows that people are there to support and help him so I just thought of one other extension of this too, is if you wanted to build something, I was thinking I could use like an old ball like this. If, if he can't get to a switch like that, I've got another switch where um, I could actually run the cable through and this could be in a hand and he could push a button that would come through one of these holes too. That would be just, you know, a slice. There's lots of different ways to build a controller um, like this, just again, depending on how that student's going to use it. Probably some modifications to this um, that I might do would be to put just so it doesn't go any place, probably put some um, Velcro on the bottom of this, and this can mount on some fuzzy stuff someplace on the chair, and just so it stays in place, and you know, put the hooks on the back of this piece and the fuzzy part someplace on the chair, and he can just move it off to the side um, if he needs to too. So that's it. There's the simple solution, and I'll put the uh, links to where to buy all the parts if you need to buy them and also the website which is chdk to download the firmware to operate with your canon camera if you have any questions about this or comments just let me know i'd be more than happy to help you my twitter name is at ron houtman or you can contact me at the kent intermediate school district in grand rapids michigan thanks